If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows. Hello and welcome to the show. My first guest today is Tony Gosling. Tony is a freelance radio journalist who specialises in the subjects of Bilderberg, the Illuminati and the Freemasons. Later we'll be joined by Freemason and Provincial Grand Secretary of South Wales, Jim Bevan. But to begin with, Tony Gosling, welcome to the show. So Tony, to begin with, tell the audience a bit about your work and what you do. Well, uh, I work, was brought up in a family in aviation and then got into radio journalism working with the BBC in London um, as a researcher, then as a reporter. And I found it actually very difficult within the constraints of the BBC yeah. to do some of the th subjects which I thought were most important for the public. And that's why, in a way, one of the reasons why we're here today is yeah. to talk about a subject which is essentially taboo in this country. Okay, and um, let's discuss some of these subjects then. So one thing I wanted to touch on to begin with, um, obviously we're going to talk about Freemasons and the Freemasonry, and we, I want to talk about Bilderberg first, because that's something that you specialise in as well. That's something you've independently researched. Well, the connections you? aren't necessarily easy for people to understand between the Bilderbergers and the Freemasons. So let's start off by explaining yeah. what the Bilderberg let's is. Bilderberg is a conference which started uh, in 1954 in Oosterbeek in Holland, which was where the Operation Market Garden, a disastrous actually airborne landing, took place in the Second World War in a hotel owned by Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. The problem I have with the Bilderbergs is that the founding chairman, Prince Bernhard, who owned that hotel, was himself an SS officer uh, in the early stages in the run up to the Second World War. So, Somebody who's the founding member is also a member of the Nazi SS. I immediately, uh, uh, you know, says, gets my hackles up and I want to find out a little bit more about this organisation because they're telling us that they're benign, essentially. So these meetings that the Bilderberg have every year, and of course they may have other meetings in between, are essentially uh, the richest and most powerful people in Europe coming together in secret. The problem I have is not that these people are having a private yeah. meeting, it's that the politicians who are in there, who are they accountable okay. to while they're in these meetings? And these people do control most of the money in the Western world. Who are these people? Well, uh, Henry Kissinger, um, there's also Kenneth Clark, the Justice Secretary. There's a whole range of in particular individuals who are involved, including the royalty. Um, but they are mostly business owners and bankers. I mean, we're obviously living in this financial crisis at the moment. There's many people pointing the finger at the bankers. And yet we're told that we're supposed to just trust these guys to get on with managing the economy. It's quite clear they've made a total mess of it. And so there needs to be more, uh, they need to open up these meetings to the public so that at least they allow press to come along. As it is, it's up to people like me and other people mm. uh, on the internet, on internet forums, to actually track them down. Ordinary people like you and I have to find out where they're going to be so meeting. So where did the last Bilderberg meeting take place? Uh, in Greece, I think it was last year. No, actually, no, uh, Portugal last year. But it's, it, it happens in all, all over the Western world. That is basically the NATO countries. And it's not a coincidence that it's the NATO zone that the Bilderberg represents because they also pick the Secretary Generals of NATO. Uh, now, NATO, the connection with the military is also rather worrying because, you know, we've got, we set up NATO after the Second World War as a kind of peaceful alliance, a defensive alliance, yeah. the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So if any of the countries in that North, North Atlantic Treaty Organization were attacked by, for example, the Soviet Union mm -hmm. or the Chinese or whatever, mm -hmm. they would all act together to defend each other. Right. NATO has completely changed from that into an aggressive force where it's actually going out now occupying and invading countries. Obviously, they come up with reasons which they're, you know, they're saying, oh, we're there to defend civilians. So what we've got here is a financial elite and they're connected in with the military too. So, so you're saying this secret group, this Bilderberg group... The connections it, between the Freemasons, though, we haven't come to... No, it. we haven't. We're, we're going to get to that. But this secret group is ruling the world, in your opinion. I don't think it's fair to say they're ruling the world. 
but they do have an immense amount of clout through the financial power that they've got. The European Central Bank, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, the, all the central banks of Europe are connected in one way or another with this through the Bank for International Settlements, also the Federal Reserve in the United States. So as you can see, as everyone is pointing the finger at bankers, I say, have a look at the Bilderberg, have a look at secret political meetings which are going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And actually mm -hmm. what's happening is, as the financial crisis is kicking in, more mainstream newspapers like The Guardian, Charlie Skelton's been writing for The Guardian, yep. uh, are actually starting to cover these meetings and they're saying, hang on, what's going on inside? So, so are you saying that, uh, that uh, well, what's wrong, uh, to begin with, with having a secret agenda? What's, what's wrong? Well, first of all, there's nothing wrong with having a private meeting. But when you're talking about massive areas of public policy within that private meeting, and when you've got politicians like Ken Clark, I mean, we have to question Ken Clark, for example. What is his motive in going to a secret meeting of the most powerful financial elite of Europe and North America? Is his loyalty to us, the public, or is it to them? And I think there's, a, there's some serious questions. In, in the United States, this is actually illegal. Uh, he could be arrested for, it's a criminal offence, for uh, our politicians, our public representatives, to go along to secret meetings without having some kind of explanation about what they're doing there. So how do you know about the Bilderberg then, if it's secret? Why, why isn't mainstream uh, media covering this? Well, the mainstream media doesn't cover it, largely because they don't know it's happening. One of the things that I've tried to do over the years is to help make sure that we actually do know ahead of the event where it's happening. I can remember going to one of these meetings over in, uh, in Belgium. This is probably, was it, near 2000. And we had the mayor turn up on site. And he, and he was told, yes, we've got Henry Kissinger, David Rockefeller, we've got uh, kings and queens of Europe, Prince right. Beatrix of the Netherlands here. Right. And he said, I don't believe you. If, if this was to have happened, I would have been told. But of course, as it turned out, it was this secret meeting taking place with all the dignitaries of Europe. And the next day, it was on the main pages of the Belgian newspapers. My final question right now uh, regarding the Bilderberg subject, surely how do you know that it's not just good intent they've got? We mustn't forget the connections between Freemasonry and Bilderberg. I mean, I, I'm not saying that this is a mas totally Masonic institution, but there are some important ones. Joseph right. Rettinger, yeah. one of the uh, founders who was a, po a Pole, he was working for MI6, according to Stephen Dorrell in his book, uh, The H History of MI6, uh, uh, Joseph Rettinger definitely was a Freemason and people in Poland now are actually writing a lot in Polish, funnily enough, about Rettinger's history Bilde as a Freemason. Bilderberg connection. So he, yeah. was, he was the founder of Bilderberg alongside Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands back in the 1950s. The other thing is we've got Andrew Palmer who's the PA, right. was the PA to the Grand Master of, uh, of Freemasonry in the world, that is the Duke of Kent, and he actually was the organiser of the last Bilderberg conference to happen in Britain. So there clearly is, that was in 1998 by the way in Scotland, yes. so there clearly is quite a close connection. If it's the PA of the Grand Master of World Freemasonry organising Bilderberg conference, but I challenge the Freemasons to say this isn't a Masonic event. Okay then let's get into the Free Freemasons then. What, tell me what you know about the Freemasons in your well, research. Well I really know uh, through two sources I suppose. One is through reading books about Freemasonry uh, such as Stephen Knight's The Brotherhood and Martin Short's Inside the Brotherhood. There's also uh, uh, another one called uh, From Darkness to Light, which is an older expose, which is, I mean, this is a big thing. In the 1940s, actually, somebody got the Freemasons initiation ceremony, got all the little gaps in it, because when they print it in books, they leave gaps uh, filled in, and published that for the first time. So these several bits of the secrets of the Freemasons have been leaking out bit by bit over the years. And so that's one of the, th one of the sources. The other sources is through my own friends who are Freemasons. I mean, I'm not here to condemn Freemasonry no. as a whole. Uh, and I think there are some very good Freemasons. But the thing is, unfortunately, it's a little bit like big business. It tends to propel the people who are more ruthless and greedy into some of the more important positions. And also, there are all sorts of fights going on within Masonic lodges, whereas, say for example, a good benevolent uh, person, and this is as you would imagine, say in a golf club or something, someone who's a good benevolent leader or a president of the golf club finds himself stabbed in the back by, not literally, you know, metaphorically, yeah. stabbed in the back by someone who actually is ruthless and just wants to take the club what, over for their own game. What's your understanding of, of, of the beliefs of Freemasonry then? Well, this is a difficult one, isn't it? What do Freemasons believe? I'm sure, you know, you can, you can ask our Freemason friend who's coming on in a minute about this, but one thing I'll tell you that, that they say about themselves is that you do have to believe in a 
uh, sort of god figure of some sort, that is to say um, a creator or um, a supreme right. power. What, what's wrong with that? I don't have any problem with that right. at all. Right. Uh, and and uh, the other thing is you really do have to keep promise when you join yes. to keep these secrets of Freemasonry yes. secret. And that I do have a problem with. I think we've got a, 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 almost like an epidemic of secrecy in our society. If we look at accountability in all sorts of areas of our lives, within, within right. the law, within justice, within government, we've really got to see, I think, more openness. OK, but they, they, the Freemasons are being open. Jim's coming on here in a minute, so, you know. Is he letting you film one of his initiation ceremonies? Um, I've not asked him that. Right. Well, I would tell you, uh, very, very unlikely that they will allow you to film the entire ceremony from beginning to end, which takes about an hour. But that doesn't mean they're a secret society, though, does it? Yes, I think it does mean they're a secret society. Yeah, yeah. Yes, because you've got... Uh, OK, ultimately, it, 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 you can spin things any way you want. Yeah. You can say, as the Freemasons do, we are society with secrets. But actually, I think at the core of it, there is a lot of secrecy. For example, we want to know if our MP is a Freemason and if our MP has a relationship through the Lodge with, say for example, uh, one of our big local businesses mm -hmm. who stands to gain. I'm afraid the problem is with Freemasonry is that we, if we simply don't know who the large Freemasonic players are in any city or in the countryside in Britain or in central government or at any place where there's power, then we can't see what's going on behind the scenes. For example, uh, contracts being done, uh, yeah. signed with, with public money going to Freemasons and also one thing you'll find right across the country is you often find but Freemasons on planning committees. Has Freemasons ever caused you any problems Tony? Uh, well I think it's difficult to tell if you don't know if someone is a Freemason yeah. or not yeah. but I think ultimately no I mean I've never been uh, I, I've got a lot of, like I say yeah. I know people who are Freemasons who are friends but it's it's also there is a, a, a sort of uh, problem that you've you've got a, a different, right. you've got the possibility, and it, I'm sure this is quite sure through ex-Freemasons I've spoken yeah. to, of corruption brewing within okay. these little secret okay. groups. We're going to have to take a break there, so uh, stay with us, Tony. OK, we're going to take a break now, but after we'll be continue to speak to Tony, and we'll also be joined by Freemason Jim Bevan. Visit themoreshow.co.uk forward slash shop to purchase products and services from your favourite past guests. If you're new to this site, you can also catch up on the previous television and radio shows through YouTube and the More Show website. Welcome back. I'm joined with uh, radio Good. journalist Tony Goslin and Provincial Grand Secretary of South Wales of the Freemasons, Jim Bevan. Now, Jim... Just tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I, initially I was, uh, my profession was that of a quantity surveyor. I gave that about 23 years ago yeah. and was then invited to join the staff at the provincial office here in Cardiff for the South Wales Freemasons. Uh, two years later I was appointed as provincial secretary and I've been in post now 21 years. Um, job I enjoy doing, somewhat different to what I was doing before, no commercial yeah. pressure and uh, perhaps a little bit more job satisfaction in finishing the day knowing you've done somebody some good rather than you made somebody some money. So let's, you're a Freemason, mm -hmm. just tell me a bit about what that entails for you. Um, I was brought up in a, in very much in a working class home. My father was a trade unionist and a, a, a very staunch member of the Labour Party at the time he died. However, nonetheless, he, he had a very great respect for the Masonic movement and always encouraged me that if I had the opportunity to join that I should. Uh, my only regret is that he, he did not live long enough uh, to see me get to where I am today within the, the order, but he did live long enough to, to see me initiated into Freemasonry, and uh, right. uh, he was quite pleased about that. Right. And, um, wh okay, so what, what's, what's the sort of stipulation to become a Freemason? Um, first of all, you need to have the time and the interest in it. Uh, your main qualification is that you must believe in a supreme being in whatever shape or form that supreme being may take. Um, if you're an atheist, you cannot belong to the Freemasons. Other than that, um, if you have a, a love of the spoken word and the written word, right. that helps, um, though not everybody is, as we say, a right. good ritualist, and other people serve the craft in different ways, in their own ways, in administrative capacities, and there's armourers, right. and there's stewards in their lodge. 
Okay then, Tony, what do you think about the idea of a supreme being? Well, the supreme being might be Lucifer. The supreme being might be the devil. Right, and what's, okay. your, what's your opinion on that? Well, I, I'm Jim. not going to get into the esoteric side of this. However, all I would say to you is that we are filming this in Cardiff within uh, 400 yards of the Masonic Hall. Uh, the Masonic Hall, I would put to you, Tony, is the only place in Cardiff where you will find a Jew, a Muslim, a Sikh, a Hindu, and a Christian sitting down in harmonious fellowship, enjoying each other's country, company in disinterested friendship. Uh, I'm not quite sure where the devil might fit into that. Well, I mean, you, you know, you have actually said it's okay for any kind of spirituality. In a way, that's a deism, isn't it? It's like you're not actually sticking to anything particularly Christian. No. It's just anything goes. It is, and, secular. And it is purely a secular organisation. The two subjects of discussion that are specifically banned in any Masonic lodge is that of politics yeah. and religion. But yeah. uh, and therefore, I don't think it really uh, much that, of a that, point in pursuing what is, this. No, but what's the odds there? Point, is you're it? saying, on the one that's hand, the it's secular, and on the other hand, it is a spiritual thing. You've got to believe in a, in a no, but it, but, but, What are you saying, though, Tony? Is, is this right that you leave that at the lodge? You no leave politics, that at the lodge door. You leave no, your no politics. Religion. You leave your standing in life. You are. When you enter Freemasonry, and you've obviously researched, you're a journalist, and I understand the basis of all good journalism is research though some of the things you seem to have researched on Freemasonry are not exactly well, accurate. Well, what would those things be, though? Um, your reference to the, uh, the Duke of Kent as being the Grand Master of the, 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 great, the, the, the United, Grand Lodge of the United World. United Grand Lodge. He, yeah. is the, he is the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of England, the United Grand Lodge of England. Every free country in the world, and interestingly, one communist state has its own sovereign grand lodge in the free world. Each state in America is in itself a sovereign grand lodge. The Duke, uh, the Duke uh, has been our grand master for over 30 years, has done much to uh, bring Freemasonry back into okay. the light. What would you uh, say to and, that uh, though, Tony? Well, I mean, if you look at United Grand Lodge, they actually do make claims. If you, if you have a look at their book, you've got lodges all over the world. In fact, many parts of the old British Empire have got lodges which are part of United Grand Lodge. Uh, uh, this, is, this is a secret society, and you say, but if you look into their book, uh, can you tell me where you got that book? This is the, uh, this actually, I just got it on the internet, but it's, but this if is... But you walked uh, into Freemasons Hall in London, you could buy it. Yes, but it doesn't have all the details in <laughs> so, there. So this is they, not They unedited. have just the officers of some of the major uh, lodges, um, and you'll have some uh, a scattering of information. But if you really want to know who your local Freemasons are, you have to get hold of something called the Provincial Yearbook. Yes. Most of the information from the Provincial Yearbook is not in that main book. Well, uh, when you've got 48 provinces and districts, can you imagine the size of the book if you try to put all into one book? Well, there's but hundreds of thousands of Masons, aren't there? Yeah, but there but are 48 what, what are the problem Freemasons are causing? though, Tony, in your opinion, what, what's it, what, the, what is the problem? Let's get to the crux of that. The crux of the issue here is about accountability and it's about the justice system and it's about government mainly, about people who have influence and power in those institutions that are secretly Freemasons. Okay, what do you say to that? Are you giving power to people within your uh, lodges? If I could come back yeah. to the Provincial Yearbook first of all, okay. we are, I, I, part of my responsibility is the Provincial Yearbook. We supply two provincial yearbooks to every library in South Wales. In fact, as I left the office today for yesterday, we had an inquiry from the public library in Swansea who asked if they could have another two copies of my secretary's book. A fully so disclosed book? That it gives you the list of every officer and every past master of every lodge in South Wales. We even some dreadful, a dreadful photograph of myself, shall I say. Uh, all the provincial officers of the year. Yeah. Uh, and also gives you details of all the other Masonic orders meeting in South Wales with their heads of order, their officers, their contact numbers. We have a website, which is you've been on our yes, website. Yes, I have, I have indeed. Uh, yeah. Just how much more open do you want to be? Are they allowed a secret, Tony? Can I, can I just uh, are they pick up secret? on that? Because, well, okay, but yes, I want to come back to that. So, yeah, go there ahead. Are all of the names of people in the lodges are not in those provincial yearbooks. You've only got the senior officers. So there are people who are Freemasons who are simply not in that Fine. provincial yeah, yearbook. Yeah, and that you then say come back to public accountability. I and my colleague John Hamill from Grand Lodge were involved some years ago in challenging the situation within the Welsh Assembly regarding the declaration of being a Freemason. Under the standing orders of the Welsh Assembly, 
you, if you were a member of the assembly and failed to declare that you were a Freemason specifically, you were not only in breach of the standing orders, you were committing a criminal offence. However, if you belonged to the Ku Klux Klan or something like that, it was quite an order for you to keep that under wraps. When, Actually, uh, no, because they were asking for declaration no, no, of all I, secret no, no, let, I, let I, want, no, 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 I want to get back to the no, point, though. The standing order said purely Freemasons. We went there to challenge this. Let's and get we back got to the, the point, standing though, of, orders of, changed so that what Tony, all organisations had to. Let's get back anyway, to the point in, what Tony was saying here just a minute ago, which was if there's judges and people in power that are, uh, that are Freemasons, yeah, isn't that, is that a bit of a problem in your opinion? It's not a problem for me, but that we, we are also dealing with perception as well as fact. And I think that anybody who belongs to an organisation, which is a private organisation, uh, and they're in public life, should declare their interest. But do they? Be it, but it's, it's but within, do it, they? I, I don't know. Within the Welsh Assembly, no, we, we do. You're a Freemason, you're quite high up, you don't know. But no, I don't want to know the workings of, of various government bodies and, and, and that. Um, but no, what I'm asking I, is, there, are, there is obviously high-powered people within the, as Freemasons, is that, would you I, say that's Well, I'm right? not aware of any MP or AM in South Wales, in Wales who is either a member or uh, a I'm Freemason. very happy to hear uh, if, it's a, if it's true that all Freemasons in the Welsh Assembly have got their, de uh, declared yeah. their interest. There aren't I can any. tell you, <laughs> I can <laughs> tell you that uh, within England it's not the case. For about three years uh, in the early 2000s, uh, all people who were councillors and MPs had to declare uh, it was a little box in your declaration of interest right. to say, are you a member of a secret society? Right. Now that obligation has gone. So we had a blip of about two years where actually there was an uh, obligation to declare your Masonic membership. If you, if you asked me if I As was a of member now, of a I'm secret society, not. even sure. if there was a box there, I, I would right. say no, because I don't belong to a secret society. I, I belong to the oldest and most honourable fraternal this is order. This with words. Well, well, no, well, no, we're not debating yes, semantics here. With words. Let, let him have a... Have a it is not him. playing with words. You must ask people if they're declaring an interest then they should declare their interest, and I'm all for that. I'm all for transparency. What I don't want is for my members to be singled out, and I don't want my members to they have their privacy invaded when it doesn't affect anybody else. Now, how, right, who's well, to say it doesn't affect anybody else? Anyway, I would go one step further. I'd say you're a religious cult. Actually, no. you're much more than just a secret society. You have your temples in which you have various rituals that you do. Right, you there is an initiation ceremony, which is actually quite blood-curdling. Yeah. And I think that's a religious cult. Right, okay. Much, your much opinion. worse than your just opinion, a secret Jim. society. Okay, okay, T Tony, your opinion, Jim? I know this is rubbish in my life. Right, okay, so you, wouldn't, you, you, you don't agree with that. I mean, w what is it then? Uh, in your, what is the Freemasons again? Let's it is a fraternal order. It is not the only fraternal order. There are several fraternal orders. Just to remind ourselves, uh, right? And, well, there's hundreds of fraternal orders. Yeah. Um, so uh, there were a lot of other friendly societies which also had similar organisations right. within, okay. within so the labour movement. It's a society, it's it's a society, it's a so it's a society well, with secrets, right? When people join, right? as on, part Tony. of the initiation ceremony, you actually, you're actually bare your chest and you have a dagger pointing to your heart. You're telling me that that is... Does not, not make you a religious cult it as is, you're joining it. Pure it's a threat of death well, to the well, new member. A, actually, no, 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 no. Actually, he's got. He's, if you look at the, one of your rings, you've got a, a, a Masonic ring on yeah, that, that you yeah, carry with yeah, you to show yeah. that obviously well, that you're a Freemason. So I don't see that as a, a, a sort of a, a, a symbolism of anything horrible. I think that if most people were to see, particularly the third degree ritual in Freemasonry. They blood, their flesh would creep. It's a blood-curdling ritual. Right, well, and, that, the, and the new initiate opinion, though, swears allegiance, allegiance to Freemasonry and actually freely declares that they can be murdered if they reveal the secrets. Now, this is the actual ritual. It is not, it is not, it is not it is not They've part, come up with an alternative ritual. Let him, ritual. Speak, let him speak. It is not part of the Sorry, ritual again. anymore. It was something that was an anachronism and it has been removed. However, it, but it, it is now. only... Uh, you're just playing out, uh, play acting, really. Yeah, yeah. And at yeah, the end of the day, but yeah. any Masonic oath yeah. that a brother takes as part of his membership of the order specifically excludes any contravention of the laws of any land in which yeah. he may live. 
and that all crimes and things like that are specifically included. Right. This business, we only look after our own. Total nonsense. Okay, we're going to take a break there, so it's time to take a break, but don't go anywhere. Both our guests are staying with us, and we'll see you after the break. Visit themoreshow.co.uk forward slash shop to purchase products and services from your favourite past guests. If you're new to this site, you can also catch up on the previous television and radio shows through YouTube and the More Show website. Welcome back for those who have just joined us. I'm here with Tony Goslin and Jim Bevan. Now, Jim, um, just quickly, tell us a bit about the beliefs of uh, Freemasonry. Well, the three uh, bases of Freemasonry are brotherly love, relief and truth, which is uh, affection for your own brethren and mainly the practice of charity. Charity is the pillar, I think, on which Freemasonry rests. Yeah. Um, we and raise our money within mm -hmm. the organization. Mm -hmm. We do not raise by asking for public subscription. Yeah. But I think the last time I saw a pie chart, it was something like 55% of the money that goes out goes out to non-Masonic right. uh, causes. So, um, so if someone's in help, in need of sort of monetary help in your organization, then you'll help each other, basically? Yes, we have a system where each lodge has an almoner. If a member is in difficulty, yeah. and it may not even be financial difficulty, it may need medical treatment or something like that, and it's not available on the National Health Service, um, then he would go to his lodge almoner, who would then uh, get in touch with myself or the provincial almoner, uh, if it was a matter of financial distress, because we have such a strong benevolent fund of our own here right. in South Wales, right. we deal with it by return of post, right. set right. it up, put them in touch with the, the, the relative yes. national charity, and then for as long as they are in need, they are helped. So if Freemasons are doing such good work, Tony, what, what is your problem? Look, I freely confess, mm. right, it's a very seductive institution. A lot of Freemasons that uh, have asked me to join you feel that they've got all the time of day to spend with you and they'll give you a drink and all this kind of thing and it is extremely seductive but when you actually look at these initiation ceremonies which still d take place within these uh, Masonic temples actually it's quite scary and frightening and do you really want to sell your soul to join an organisation? Are you selling your soul to become no, a I, 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 I've never, I, It's a long time since anybody called me seductive for starters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and those who know me better don't try to get a drink out of me, but there we are. Uh, no, I, I, we're yeah. not selling our soul or anything. We, we, we have changed the rules because it used to be that you had to uh, be asked to join Freemasonry. Yeah. And now with the, uh, with the internet, we are getting so many applications, particularly from young people right. who want to become Masons or know more about it. Why is that uh, so? Don't know. Don't know, but there are more and more young people. We are getting more and pe more young people could, in university. Could that who be want to due join. to books like Dan Brown's book? Uh, it could well be. Um, I mean, they say Mr. Brown has done very well. It, you know, he's other than myself and Tony. He's the only guy making money out of and Freemasonry does, at the do, moment, do, isn't do he? Do you believe the, the book at all? I mean, you I, I, I have to admit, I didn't read it. I started okay. to read it. I had an idea where it might end up. So I, I let my good lady wear, read it and, okay. and asked if the conclusion was yeah. right. She I have to disagree with sure, you, though, right. because I think there's actually a bit of a crisis in Freemasonry right now, as people doubt it, as the, the internet has opened up a lot of uh, old documentaries about Freemasonry, for example, for people to watch, where they're now thinking, actually, this looks like the sort of organisation I wouldn't want to touch with the barge pole. Why? Because right. of these initiation ceremonies. So what, we're keep, keep initiation. what we're hearing here... What we're hearing here... what is an allegory. Actually, actually you've got a new ceremony around your neck, right, okay. right? You've got a dagger to your heart, and you're trying to tell me that this isn't a threat of death. Right. What it do you is think pure you? symbolism. Uh, do you know why the Romans particularly disliked and martyred the early Christians? Do you? Because the main taboo in Roman society, Roman society was pretty relaxed. Wherever they go, went in the empire, they let the locals observe their custom. But the one thing that the ancient Romans disliked was cannibalism. And they saw the communion service as cannibalism. And that is why they did so, dread, so many dreadful things and treated the early Christians Actually, so badly. Actually, I think it's because the early Christian church was a threat to the Roman pagan mm -hmm. gods. Actually, that's the reason. 
Uh, right. So the reason I think also yep. that you've got a crisis is because people are I finding out about uh, Freemasonry. If you have a look, have a lot of Freemasons crisis. are saying that there, no there is a problem. No. There is a problem with people not returning or people who've been initiated into the lodge is simply not turning up at lodge anymore and also getting new recruits and of course privilege and promotion is one of the reasons that people join Freemasonry in a, in a state where it's actually you, quite difficult to get a but, job but, but, increasingly difficult people are going to join for privilege and promotion are those people, the if, sort of people you want to if join? If people join Freemasonry on the basis that they're going to improve their own situation they've quickly become deluded and leave, because that is not what Freemasonry is all about. What about those it is not, no. it is not what, what about I've the come contacts across. that they're making in the lodge what to get contacts? jobs and this sort of thing? If well, I, when I was well, in you practice, yourself are in the building actually, trade. Well, I, I was, Actually, well, that, that, I was, that's, uh, that's a good point. I'd like to bring up with yeah. both of you about the contacts. Um, is that possible that people could join for contacts? In 25 and years, in the wrong way as practicing well. as, a, example, as, a, as a quality surveyor, I never once encountered anybody who tried to use their Masonic membership to gain any influence over me, and if I had, I would have cut them dead. Right. Well, the rest of us have to keep our fingers crossed on that one. Well, yeah. I, I, I would like to think that most of my colleagues within the uh, Institute of Charter Surveyors have a standard, a professional standard. Well, let's let, okay, I, t I tell you what, guys, let's look into what goes on in the, in the lodges when we're not talking about politics and when we're not talking about religion what do they talk about Jim? Well often it's the complaint or how nice the meal is okay um, how cheap or how cheaper the beer is somewhere else yeah and generally the quality of this uh, dreadful ceremony that takes part which people put a lot of work into learning because it's it's learned it's not read it's learned yeah and Whoever wrote the Masonic Ritual, no matter what Tony may say about it, if you pick up a Masonic Ritual and read some of the charges yeah. there, it is the f some of the finest prose so you, you will on. ever get in the English language. And I was, my, my, yeah. my appreciation of the written and spoken word was impressed on me in, in junior school. Right, so there you go, Tony. But why is it there then that as people are being it, initiated, I mean, one a piece, time, a piece of film that was shown uh, on a HTV documentary shows the initiate actually trembling, physically shaking, as he's, as he's being initiated into Freemasonry. Why was, is was that? Was that, that, record, that. that pre-recorded? Was that, was that staged? No, it was, a, it was a specific part of it, the it, it, initiation, was it, was it, yeah, was it you, which was allowed was it, to be filmed. Earlier right, you okay. said that they would not be allowed to film an initiation ceremony, and that is correct. You not, will never, ever okay. see film let's, of an actual let's move initiation. On to a You'll see a part of it. So and this is a part of it. Let's move on to yes. a different topic here. Nope. Let's HTV, uh, 2002. Nope. Uh, it's a um, right. We're going right, to move Masonic on to a different documentary. Topic here. Half okay. an hour Tony, about Tony, Freemasons. Tony, we're going to move on to a different topic here. I, I want to discuss as well about why aren't women allowed in, uh, to be Freemasons? Essentially, it's always been an all-male environment. There are two uh, women, women's Freemasons lodges, grand lodges in this country. So it's changing. Uh, no, 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 no. They, the ladies, have their own Masonic organisation, and there are other. Uh, what I would call quasi-Masonic organisations yeah. that admit men and women, but they are not recognised. Well, what about the whole thing about the secret sh uh, handshakes? It's again, it is a mode of recognition, yeah. which is uh, allegedly taken back to the old craft lodges, where, when you were apprenticed as a as, as a free uh, an active mason, uh, building the cathedrals and the, the great buildings. Um, the workshop of a mason was known as the lodge, and, and, uh, and it yeah. is so that the Freemasons of today yeah. have taken the symbolism of that right. craft, the craftsman in that lodge, right. uh, uh, and applied it into an allegorical and, situation. And, and do, do the women have to do a, a, a sort of secret handshake? I have no well? idea. I don't know. I, I, I know that some of our brethren, have, their ladies, belong to this. Yeah. Uh, I would hate to think that my wife was a lady mason because she might be better at the ritual than I. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I, I really don't understand so it. I, I, I know that the do WY you, let ladies in, uh, men in, no, but I, yeah, I don't do really you want understand. To, so, so is there a solid answer on why women aren't allowed then? It just well, it, it's just it's historical. It is it's always historical. Been, um, right. You know, I, it's only in recent yeah. years that, uh, well, not that but far about, distant when ladies still have the vote in this country. Yeah. Would you change? Are you willing to? I don't see the need for it. Right, okay. Uh, there, you know, there is an accommodation within 
you know, there's only one yeah. male Grand Lodge in this country, but there are... Well, I, I would actually challenge... Been asked to change. Ke Kevin, I, no. I would challenge no. here and say, well, actually, I think it could be I I now illegal for you to have an organisation no, that doesn't it, allow women in. No, it's and not. also, I mean, this is really archaic, isn't it? You're come, coming from... from like we medieval are, times we are or something. archaic. Well, if, if some, some people will take Freemasonry back to the, what are the you, building. Why are the you premise. so afraid of allowing women into the lodges? I'm not afraid of allowing women into the lodges. I'm going to a lunch tomorrow. Uh, no, in into your lodges, in, in, in into a lodge. In the Masonic Hall in Cardiff. When will we see a woman's and, and name the, in your the lodge? Ladies, the ladies will be in the main temple there. But they the can't reception. join the, the no, lodge? No. But then you are, you know, you 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 are a separate society to went to 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 We're a private body. organization. A private organization, like you say. So I think this says their, it all. Rules, it though. actually says it all. That actually Freemasonry is an institution that's had its day. I think we're going to see in the future actually less people becoming part of Freemasonry because they see it as very archaic and sexist. What do you have to say to that? Do we'll you? see. Okay. So what about, I want to just talk, talk briefly about some of the, the videos out there which sort of, you know, um, sort of damage and sort of discriminate uh, Freemasonry, especially on, on, on the internet. Um, have you uh, seen some of these documentaries and, and, and sort of self-published material that people post? No, I haven't. I, I don't take much interest in it, uh, but I, I know it's out there. Yeah. Um, similarly, mm -hmm. there were other, it's, it's only a, a, an electronic form of the pamphleteering, anti-Masonic pamphleteering that was going on in the 18th anti century. Anti-Masonic? And who is doing these, this, this kind of stuff? I don't know. Well, people I, like me. People <laughs> like you. But yeah. also, more yeah. seriously, it's ex-Masons, people who've left for one reason or another. Yeah. And I think these are the more credible sources. I think you might, you might actually agree, mightn't you, Jim? Uh, no, I, I don't agree. People because who've I, left. As I've said earlier, some people join Freemasonry with the wrong idea that they're going to get something out of it. You get nothing out of Freemasonry you don't put into it. And when you come into Freemasonry, you come in, you know all about our ritual and the initiation ceremony. Now tell us something else about it, is that you come in there without any money in your pocket and with no metallic substance of value about your purse. But how do you pay your so subs you enter if you haven't got any you money? you enter into the lodge what? poor and penniless. What good would it do, Tony, if the Freemasons weren't there? I mean, obviously, they're doing a lot of good, aren't they, to, to helping each other and you the know, whole help, helping thing, the community? Come on. The whole thing is elitist. It's the profane, it's how the uh, Freemasons in their books talk about the rest of us. It, they see themselves as somehow spiritually superior. And is I think that, that's are you really saying dodgy. that from a stance because you, you were denied being allowed to be a Freemason? No, I haven't been denied. I've been asked several times and I've declined. All I'm saying is I think we need to have more Why equality in our Why society. Do you I'm not interested in going through these ceremonies, right? These right. initiation rites right. where but, but you would have you would deprive other people of the where privilege. there's a threat of death. Well, that's a good point. Would you I'm, would I'm you not saying that people? people shouldn't be allowed to be Masons. All I'm saying is I'm it should be open it. and accountable. It That's is all incredible. I'm saying, particularly with regards to our courts, our crown courts, our judicial I system, and the highest more. areas of politics. I couldn't and agree What's with happened is the that. Freemasons have blocked this. What no. about chief police officers who are Freemasons? What about this, them? This Can you is name one? a problem. Could you name me one of the members of our Right court? now, no, because they don't have to declare their interests, do they? They should have to. That should be a very basic Shall part I of our criminal law. Not okay. one member of ACPO is a Freemason. There you go. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. But Again, uh, I've stated it on public record. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about Hugh Ward? That's who's in the, it was uh, connected with the Orange Order. You for say example. you don't believe Jim, <laughs> that's, but then, that's then, 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 then obviously, you know, Jim probably feels the same way on a lot of the things that you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, a lot of what you, you know, I read the book by Stephen King. Was it Stephen, Stephen King? Knight? Uh, Stephen Knight. Stephen Knight. Yeah. yeah. How that guy could be so accurate about so some aspects of Freemasonry? But he showed the and chief of the anti-terrorist so police far off based on some of the other things Yeah, but he, he showed said. that some of the senior police in London, the Metropolitan Police, the were Freemasons. When was the book published? Well, what's it, in the 1980s. Could that be a conflict Service. of interest? Could that be a conflict, a conflict <laughs> of, in, of interest, Jim, for police to be Freemasons? I think that, you know, and this oh. is a personal opinion, okay? Yeah. That when you take on certain uh, jobs or positions in public life, you should be seen to be above suspicion. And I remember having uh, a discussion with the late Lord Tonopandy, uh, jo George Thomas, not long before he died. And George Thomas was a mason. Yeah. He was initiated into a lodge in Penarth. Uh, but he became what is, he resigned from the lodge and became what is known as an unattached mason. And I asked him why he did that. 
And he said that he felt that when he entered politics, he had to show that he was representing everybody in his yeah. constituency, Masons and non-Masons. Yeah. And he said that he felt that having stood back from Freemasonry, he was still a Mason. He would be a Mason to the day he died. One thing, Tony, that you want to say to Jim? Well, I think, you know, Masons should themselves read John Robeson, who was himself a Freemason's book, which was written in the late 1700s. I know this is going way back, but he was a senior Freemason. He was also a close friend of James Watt, the inventor of the steam engine. Mm -hmm. He was also uh, the secretary of the Royal Society in Edinburgh. Yeah. And he could see that actually Freemasonry, which used to be, I think, a very good fraternal society like you're saying, was being taken over in the 1800s and actually there was all sorts of new aspects to it coming in through this organisation they called the Illuminati, mm. which were actually poisoning the society he loved. Well, and okay. I think if most okay. Freemasons today okay. could read that and see yep. that, and they'd I, be yeah. rather worried. Okay. And I, and I would then offer for your reading list a book by Sir James Stubbs, who was the past Grand Secretary of the United Grand Lodge of England, concerning his life in Freemasonry, which is a little bit more up to date than Brother Robeson, and might give you a better understanding okay. of and what Freemasonry is. Well, we can agree on that. Tony, Tony what, good. I'll have a look at your book. <laughs> and one very quick thing, Jim, that you'd like to say to Tony. I would just like to spend more time with Tony and try and uh, answer his questions and, and, and okay. dispel his his misgivings okay uh, okay and more than we've been able to do well gentlemen thank you so much both for joining us today it's been a complete pleasure to have you both on it really has so uh, for more information on tony goslin or jim bevan visit my website themoreshow.co.uk stay tuned because after the break i'll be joined by a video link with regressionist therapist dolores cannon If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows.